The subject of this video cassette is entitled New Age Spirits from the Underworld. I've studied hundreds of hours, reading over 20 volumes covering thousands of pages to get the information you're about to receive. And I think you're going to understand that the New Age movement is tied in with demonic spirits. And you know, Rex, that reminds me of the story of Evan Roberts, who led in the great Welsh revival a century ago. And of course, Satan always works when God wants to work. And one night when this big farm boy, Evan Roberts, was preaching in Wales, a heckler in the balcony kept sh shouting things down at him. Well, it got to him after a while, so he went up into the balcony, grabbed him, took him to the front door, threw him outside, and the clergy got together and said, Oh, Evan, Evan, you're going to destroy the work of God in this city. Do you think Jesus would have done that? And he said, No. <laughs> he said, Jesus would have cast the demon out of the man, but I didn't have that power, so I just cast the whole works out. <laughs> and... Perhaps when we get through with this subject tonight, you'll throw the whole works out as far as the New Age movement's concerned. And we're going to do this like we do our television programs. Rexella will be feeding me articles for documentation, and then I'll be commenting on them from the Word of God. Rexella? All right, Jack, I'm glad to do that. The New Age movement is growing so much. It's in every area of our life. They now have their own magazines and even infiltrated many of our newspapers. New Age News. New Age comic books for children, New Age jazz, New Age toys for some of our little ones, New Age soul food, New Age videos. Seventy percent of our homes now have videos, so they have taken advantage of it. New Age dating service, New Age travel agencies, New Age accountants, New Age attorneys, New Age astrology, New Age religion, and this last one really brings spirit in my heart. The New Age doctrine infiltrates our schools. Well, I'm sure this question is upon your mind as it is on mine. Jack, what is the New Age, and, and is it really new? Well, after 2,000 years, we've passed into the age of Aquarius, and that, of course, is the symbol of the water bearer. And some of the leaders say the time has come that our thirst will be quenched. Well, they've got the wrong one or movement to quench their thirst. The one who can satisfy the thirst of the soul is the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember what he said to the woman at the well in John 4, 13, Lady, whosoever drinketh of this water in the well shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up, bubbling up into everlasting life. John 7, 37, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, <laughs> let him come unto me and drink. So this is the age of Aquarius. And I believe that Maharashi got the Beatles to begin promoting this to the world. And that was through transcendental meditation. And you know, even now they have a million devotees in this nation according to 2020. But that's just one phase of it. There are literally millions involved in this movement now internationally. But, Rexel, it's not really new. It goes all the way back to the beginning. And it goes back to Satan. He was God's anointed cherub. God had created Lucifer to serve him. And the story is recorded in, of course, Ezekiel 28, 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth I have set thee so. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created until iniquity was found in thee. Thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. His fall is recorded in Isaiah 14, verses 12 to 14. It has to do with eye trouble. He needed to see a good optometrist. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation, God's throne, in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the heavens. I will be like the most high God. He said, I'm not satisfied. I want to rise to be like God or to go above God. Jesus there from all eternity is the second member of the Trinity. 
God the Son said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Luke 10, 18. Now, he only fell from the third heaven. There are three heavens, 2 Corinthians 12, 2. Satan is still in control of heaven 1 and 2 and can approach the end of heaven 2 into heaven 3 as the accuser of the brethren, accuser of the Christians, Revelation 12, 10. Right now he visits the earth and in Revelation 12 he's going to be cast down to the earth during the tribulation hour. Uh, remember in the Garden of Eden, he tried to make his plan work there. It didn't work in heaven and now he's going to try to make it work on earth. And he says to Adam and Eve, because they were told not to eat of the tree, Genesis 2.17, Ah, God knows that in the day you eat of that tree, you shall be as gods, Genesis 3.5. There is the beginning of the New Age movement. We will be gods, the I Am movement. It's here, as we'll see later. But that failed, because they did disobey God. They did not become as gods. In fact, the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. Genesis 3, 7. He tried again with the Lord Jesus Christ. God came to earth, became a man, the God-man. And in Matthew 4, verse 8, Satan shows the Lord Jesus Christ all the kings, kingdoms of the world and says in verse 9, all these things will I give you if you'll fall down and worship me. I want to be God. It failed. But soon, it won't fail. For Revelation 13, 8 says, All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, because he has become God. He elevates himself above all gods. New Agers will say, I am God, like Shirley MacLaine did in her movie, Out on a Limb, on television. And she stood on Malibu Beach crying out, I'm God, I'm God. And he will become the God over the other gods. So he's going to win because the devil will become incarnate in human flesh, specifically during the last part of the tribulation hour as he declares himself as God, 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, and is worshipped. Mm, my, oh, my, Dick, what an explanation for the beginning of the New Age movement. It isn't really new then. Do you remember in the beginning of the program tonight, I said that they had their own magazine? Well, I have here what is called the New Age Journal, a special annual directory edition. More than 800 listings, the definitive guide to new age living. And this is what is said about some of their magazines according to the advertising blurb for the New Age Media, International New Consciousness Directory. The first edition of this year's directory features the names and full addresses of approximately, listen to this, 10,000 New Age organizations with their branches throughout the United States and Canada and some overseas. That's really growing, isn't it, Jack? Organizations as diverse as Amnesty International, Greenpeace, the Sierra Club, Children of God and Zero Population Growth openly and proudly build themselves as New Age. They're very diverse groups dealing with such things as holistic health, environmental concerns, uh, parapsychology, occult religion, peace activism, anti-nuclear action, and natural childbirth. Well, listen, what links all of these groups together is that they are part of a movement. They're not an organization with a central office, but part of a vast network of individuals and organizations that have a philosophy in common. That philosophy is described as the teaching of the New Age movement, and there are scores of organizations that now belong to the New Age. And Jack, you wanted me to read one more thing here by Russell Chandler, who is from the LA Times. He says this, 42% of Americans have, say, they say, contacted the dead. 70 million have psychic experiences. 30 million Americans believe in reincarnation. 50,000 witches are now in the United States, and it's closer probably to 100,000. There are 185,000 part-time or full-time astrologers in the United States. 25,000 New Age titles can be found in bookstores. 
and there are more spirit channelers in L.A. than anywhere else in the United States. Jack, that app. How can all of these intelligent people become a part of it? What's behind it? And Rexella, uh, we can name Shirley MacLaine, John Denver, Linda Evans, Tina Turner, just hosts of people, politicians galore. Yes. Thousands and thousands of famous names are becoming involved in all this occultic worship. And it's because Satan is behind it. And you know, we don't give him credit for the power he really has. Now, he's not all powerful like God the Father, but he does possess power. And first of all, we find out in Scripture that he is a deceiver. Revelation 20, verse 2 and 3. And he can do the job well because he appears as an angel of light, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. Then he is the enemy of all truth, Matthew 13, 29. He's a foul spirit, Mark 9, 25. He's the God of this world system, 2 Corinthians 4, 4. He's a liar and a murderer, John 8, 44. He's the prince of the power of the air, airwaves, Ephesians 2, 2. He's the prince of darkness, Ephesians 6, 12. He's a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour, 1 Peter 5, 8. He is a slithering serpent and snake in his dealings with the human race, Revelation 20, verse 2. And he is the tempter, even the one who tried to tempt Jesus in Matthew 4, 2. And that's why 1 John 5, 19 says, The whole world lieth in the wicked one, in wickedness, because he's so powerful and has millions, perhaps billions of demonic spirits to help him, for there is an army of these malignant spirits, Ephesians 6, 12. They capture the minds of people. In fact, there are doctrinal demons, there are seducing demons in 1 Timothy 4, 1, who capture these minds, and they're brainwashed. They can't get out of it. All right, Jack. It's so sad to know that he has that kind of power over people. Well, Dr. Hart Armstrong has said, I think it's a very good description, the New Age is a hodgepodge of spirit worship, Hindu mysticism, avant-garde psychology. Its chief doctrine is that you are God. And this goes back to the ancient Hinduism, which teaches that everyone and everything is part of God and part of the universe. I have here a magazine, and it has kind of a shocking cover called The Connecting Link. And the publisher, uh, Susie Konikov, says, We are to bring ourselves back to the state of being where we are like gods. And we are now at that threshold. It's exciting. It's awesome. It is the new decade, and it's this time. Let us join hands and soar together. Well, Jack, you wanted me to go all the way back to Babylon here, and I'm going to do that because Babylon embraced this great lie. Its inhabitants claimed the title I am and identified the human self with God. Now, this surprises me. Well, Rexel, let me just add right here. The reason, then, that the last final world religion is called Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Revelation 17, 5, is because all of this I am teaching, I am philosophy started there, and it's really infiltrating the New Age movement, as we'll see. Right from Babylonianism. Right. My. Walt Whitman, and as I said, this surprises me, in his famous poem states, Divine am I inside and out, and make holy whatever I touch or am touched from. Psychiatrist M. Scott Peck says God wants us to become him, her, or it. We grow toward Godhood. I got my truth. I can't use anybody else's. You're all beautiful. You are God. That is it, baby. Terry Cole Whitaker from the Magical Blend magazine. Elizabeth Burroughs says, We are gods. We can bring in the new age. And then number five, the new age doctrine states this, that I am is God, that I am is you, God knowing itself as you and you knowing yourself as God. And then a name many of you are familiar with, John Randolph Price says, I am God. We're going to be dealing with him just a little bit later on this tape. 
Chris Pringle says, I am that I am, and through me is the power of all life manifested. And then, of course, a name we're all familiar with. Shirley MacLaine in her book, Dancing in the Light, states, I know that I exist, therefore I am. I know that God sources exist, therefore it is. Since I am part of that force, then I am that I am. Jack, how can these people? They're all such what intellectual blasphemy. people. What blasphemy. What blasphemy. Yeah, arrogance. If there were no other reason I believe that Christ was coming soon, this would be it. Right. Because 2 Timothy 3 once says, This know also that in the last day perilous time shall come, for men shall be blasphemers. Now the title, I am that I am, belongs to God Almighty, not to mortals. And they take it so freely, you've heard ten instances. Whew. Let me show you something. Do you remember when Moses was told by Jehovah God to deliver the children of Israel from the hand of the Egyptians? But he said, whom shall I say sent me? And then Jehovah God answers in Exodus 3.14, Tell them, I am that I am hath sent you. That tells us that this is God's title. No doubt about it. Now, when Benjamin Cream recently was on television, he said, nowhere did Jesus claim to be God. He must be reading comic books instead of the Bible. Jesus used that very title, I am that I am, and everyone knew what he meant when he used it. They didn't like it. Over in John chapter 8, verses 56 to 58. Jesus said to the people of his day, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. And they said, You're not yet 50 years old, and have you seen our father Abraham? And then Christ said, Before Abraham was, I am. I am that I am. I am the I am of Exodus 3.14 the one who spoke to Moses. He said, now wait a minute, according to our chronological charts, our father Abraham lived 2,136 years ago. You say that he saw you, you saw him, yeah, because I am the I, I am. Listen, folks, this is why Jesus repeatedly used this title. Just study John 8, 28, John 8, 58. John 18, verse 5, 18, 6, 18, 8. But let me give you a couple of them. John 6, 35. Christ speaking, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Chapter 8, verse 12. I am the light of the world. John 10, 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter, and he shall be saved. John 10, 11. I am the good shepherd. John eleven twenty five. 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 15, 5, I am the vine. John 18, 1, I am he. I am he. Now, if you don't believe that, then you don't believe he's God. Let me prove that. John 8, verses 23 and 24. He said, If you believe not that I am He, I am that I am, you shall die in your sins. I think that answers it pretty well. And these people blasphemously use this title, including Cheryl McLean. God forgive her. She knows not what she says. This is the New Age philosophy. But, oh, this is exciting, Rexella. They asked Jesus, when are you coming back? Give us one of the greatest signs about your return. And he said in Mark 13, verse 6, Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, whenever one sees italics in a Bible verse, it means that it was not in the original Greek language, for this is only an English translation. So we can leave it out, because it was not originally there. What do we have so far? Many shall come in my name, saying, I am, and shall deceive many. But there's even more. The word many in the original Greek is polos, meaning perhaps even millions. So let's translate it that way. Millions will come in my name, saying, I am, and shall deceive millions. 
This has never happened in the history of the world in such a gigantic style or undertaking as at this present hour. Why? Jesus Christ is coming soon. In a, mo a couple of moments ago, I quoted John Randolph Price. I think you're going to be shocked as I read for you a prayer that was used at the World Healing Meditation Day. He said these words. I begin with me. I'm a living soul, and the Spirit of God dwells in me as me. I and the Father are one, and all that the Father has is mine. In truth, I am the Christ of God. What is true of me is true of everyone, for God is all, and all is God. I see only the Spirit of God in every soul. And to every man, woman, and child on earth I say, I love you, for you are me. You are my holy self. I am one with the light. I am filled with the light. I am illuminated by the light. I am the light of the world. What arrogance for this man to take Jesus Christ's title. These people are egomaniacs. This is what Jesus said in John 8, 12. I am the light of the world, not John Randolph Price. You know what, folks? Again, he's saying this because this is Satan's theme song. This is why he fell. I quoted it earlier. Let me repeat it. The five famous eyes. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation of God's throne in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the heavens. I will be like the most high God. I, I. And he fell. You know, God lays down the qualifications for ministers in 1 Timothy 3, and when he gets to verse 6, he says, a minister is not to be a novice, a new convert. Why? It might go to his head. And he will fall into the condemnation of the devil because of his pride. Literally fall into the same condemnation into which Satan fell because of his sin of pride. God hates this sin. And yet they so blasphemously use his titles. Yes, These do. six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Number one, a proud how different my Jesus was. He was the true God, the second member of the Trinity. And yet he took upon himself the form of a servant. In Philippians 2, 6 to 8. And when he was on earth, he said, oh, in Matthew eleven twenty-nine, 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. John the Baptist saw our Lord Jesus and he said, he must increase, I must decrease. That's the true Christian spirit. For you see, in Christendom, the way up is down. Oh, we need to learn that lesson. Humble yourself in the sight of God, and he will lift you up. James 4.10. What these people need to do. And any who are so proud and so arrogant is fall on their faces and ask God for forgiveness because then and only then will blessing come. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Sat Chronicles 7.14. Jack, from the Yoga Journal, March April of this year, we have some very interesting pictures. These are the pictures of some of America's yoga pioneers, a few of the many who actually came to the United States and started and are even here now, some of the uh, swamis and the yoga gurus who are teaching our young people what it is, how they can actually get into yoga and enter into another self. Uh, then we have the swami. Uh, Rama in the Midwest who started a Himalayan Institute in the Midwest and he offers many classes one in yoga and meditation and philosophy and psychology and the principles of holistic living that's quite a picture of the Swami isn't it and then sounds of silence this woman that you see on the screen right now promotes the spirits through channeling and meditation and breathing exercises and then we have Doris Stokes 
who says if you touch this photo, it will bring you health and riches beyond measure. Just follow the instructions on page 46. Then we have Nathaniel, uh, a numerological, clairvoyant, radio and television star. He says that he can tell you how to get out of this life and into another spirit than the power of crystals. As you see on the screen right now, they claim that these crystals have a lot of power in your life if you will uh, call upon them to help you. Then they have their jewelry. And you know, this one is sort of uh, makes me laugh, Jack, because uh, it's a very unusual picture there with jewelry from the ear to oh, the mouth. I want them to keep that on the screen for a moment, Rexella, because Arsenio Hall saw this picture and he said if they put a chain from my ear to my nose, it would frighten me because every time I'd sneeze, I'd probably rip my ear off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might happen. The very unusual jewelry that they have in the New Age movement there. I don't know if he just picked that one out himself. Uh, then we have also a picture here from a New Age magazine called Connecting with Your Higher Self. What's this all about, connecting with your higher self? Uh, did you ever wonder what it might look like to actually see... Uh, one of the voices coming through someone in a spirit, a channeling, a channeler, actually having a voice speaking through it. Well, here, th this is AZ Knight, and of course, the spirit that speaks through her is Rantha Jack, and I think that's a very interesting picture there on our screen right now. But this is what 35,000-year-old demon. He's older than that. He's been here from all eternity. He's as old as the devil. All right. Getting in touch with your inner guide is what that picture is all about. In this exercise, you meet your wisdom keeper or spirit guide, an inner person who can be with you in life, someone to whom you can turn to for guidance. The way one contacts these beings is by breathing or mantra meditation or Yoga. Jack, I'm so happy that I don't have to depend on That's those right. spirit guides. But I have a very interesting story here. Oh, this here. next thing is literally unbelievable. This is shocking. So listen carefully. All right. Marie Bridgman was reared in a home where they had regular uh, visits from spirit guides. In fact, her mother and sister were selected to be trained as mediums, and they conducted seances in their homes all the time. So Marie Bridgman would hear these voices regularly. She knew what they sounded like and actually was guided guided by their advice. Well, when Shirley MacLaine had her miniseries out on a limb on television, Marie Bridgman was listening uh, to this miniseries. And all of a sudden, uh, as you well know, Shirley MacLaine invited a medium uh, into her home, and Marie Bridgman heard a voice that she recognized. It came through the person that Shirley MacLaine had on her miniseries. Well, she didn't think that she could possibly be true because she said, I turned my face from the television set and started to pray. Surely this could not be real. This had to be an actor. Well, the next day a friend called her and said, Good Morning America had the actor, so-called, on their television program. And the person said, I'm not really an actor. I am. I actually went into a trance and I became a channeler. And the spirit guide spoke through me. She had actually recognized this voice from days gone by in her home. Jack, that astounds me. Rexella, I'm going to go slowly now because these are the most important verses you're going to hear in this message as to what is wrong with the New Age movement. It's connected with demonic spirits. It's the sign of the end. For the Holy Spirit, through Paul said in 1 Timothy 4, 1, the Holy Spirit, speaking expressly, plainly, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, the Christian faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. And I just saw this the other day. 2 Timothy 3, 13 says, evil men and seducers, seducing spirits, shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. It's here. Spirits from the underworld. The New Age rage. Now, what does God's Word have to say about this? Let's first of all look at the Old Testament, the uh, Jewish scriptures. In Isaiah 8, 19, the prophet says, When they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and mutter. Peep is dope. 
The mutter is to speak in guttural tones like Ramtha does through Jay-Z Knight. Then you should reply, Isaiah says, should not a people seek under their God? Then in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 10 to 12, he says, There shall not be found among you anyone that causeth his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or is an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. Why? For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord God Jehovah. Leviticus 19, 31, Regard not, regard not the, them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled, made dirty by them. Leviticus 20, verse 6, And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards, I'll even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Now God's speaking to the Jews there in all these Old Testament verses. And you know, Saul died. Why? Because he went to a familiar spirit. If God starts judging this nation, America, and all these familiar spirits speaking through all these channelers and the New Age people, millions would be dead. Who knows? He might. But in 1 Chronicles 10, 13, he says, So Saul died for the transgression which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not. What do you do? Asking counsel of one that hath a familiar spirit to inquire of it. Oh, Jesus battled against these familiar spirits in his day. And they're still here. Do you know that demonic spirits are immortal? They don't die. And they'll only be incarcerated at the great judgment day of Revelation 20, verses 11 to 15. And you and I shall judge them, for we shall judge angels, fallen angels. 1 Corinthians 6, 3. But they would bring many to Jesus and it says he cast out the evil spirits with his word in Matthew 8 16 in Mark 1 34 he cast out many demons Mark 1 39 he preached in all the synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out demons these familiar spirits because the two terms are interchangeable familiar spirits demonic spirits. Do you remember the story in Mark chapter 5, the Gadarene demoniac? This man was berserk. He was running among the tombs in the graveyard, crying, cutting himself with stones, and when they bound him with chains, he could snap them to pieces. Why? When a man has demons controlling him, he has superhuman strength. You know, a lot of what we call mental temporary insanity has to do with spirits. That's why some of them have such superhuman strength. And Jesus said, what's your name? My name is Legion. We are many. The demon was speaking through the human's vocal cords. A legion in the Roman army was 6,000. There were probably somewhere from 2,000 to 6,000 in this gathering demoniac. Because in Mark 5, 13, when the man begs for help, it says, and forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the spirits departed out of the man and entered into the swine. Watch it. And the whole herd ran violently. Violently. The man was violent. Now the demons have made him violent, make the swine violent. And as they run down the hill, they run into the sea. There were about 2,000. At least one demon in each one of the swine, 2,000. And they were choked. Now these were suicidal demons. That's why the man was torturing himself. There are such things? Yes. We're wondering why all the suicide is taking place in America. Much of it has to do with demonic spirits because they impress. They can't always pose us, but they can impress everyone. They can do many things. Impress, obsess, suppress, depress. Man came to Jesus in Matthew 17, 15. He says, Lord, Lord, have mercy on me, for my son is a lunatic. They used to associate mental illness with the moon, the lunar body. Why? He's sore distressed. Why? 
oft times he casteth himself into the fire and off into the water. He tries to take his life by throwing himself into fire, by drowning himself. They are also homicidal. Why all the murder in the world? Because Satan is a murderer from the beginning, John 8, 44. I don't read anywhere in the Bible he murdered anyone, but he impressed Cain to murder his brother Abel. It came to pass while they were talking that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. But who was behind it? This manipulative, demonic power called Satan. Watch out. This is a horrible movement, folks. Terrible movement. They're calling these spirits into their bodies as channelers. The gurus and the swamis are saying that they're gods. But the weird thing of it is that they ask these familiar spirits to enter them so they can rise to Godhood. It's so inconsistent. It's dangerous business. Jack, when you were talking right then about uh, the Spirit speaking from this man to Jesus, I couldn't help but think what I was just reading here about Shirley MacLaine's miniseries, and the actor said that on Good Morning America, he had gone into a trance, and the voices were the very voices of the spirits that had talked through him. Mm -hmm. And so when Rantha speaks through AZ Night, those are the voices of those of spirits. the actual spirits that have always been here and are always going to be here. They don't die. And you know, that's what's wrong with some of us religionists. We just say, oh, these things, temporary insanity. Any man who murders, rapes, pillages is temporarily insane, but it's a spirit oft times that's making him do it. And you know, Rex Eller, there's an interesting Hebrew word, a gastromuthus, translated a ventriloquist demon. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what these demonic spirits can do. Oh. You also quoted from uh, Deuteronomy 18.10 back there, Jack, and there were several words that I'm sure some of you are wondering about, and I'd just like to quickly ask him about these words right now. Maybe we can be clarified in our own minds. You, you talked about passing through the fire. What, what does that mean? Well, these people were offering their children to the god Moloch and throwing him into the fire to appease him. All right, using divination. What is this? Uh, that is fortune-telling. One uses... Um, one of these uh, crystal palm things or another object to tell the fortune and whatever they use, whatever the object, it is called divination. Yeah, or like a Ouija board or something yes. like that. All right, an observer of times. Astrological charts. And I'll tell you, when we and our political leaders get involved in this astrology, we're going against the Word of God. All right, an enchanter. An enchanter is one who places another under a spell, and we better watch out for this hypnosis business because that's part of it. Hmm. A witch? That is one who uses potions. He may brew them, whatever tea leaves, to tell the future in connection with demonic spirits. A charmer? This is one who uses charms, and that's what these crystals are all about. And many of the charmers use the crystals in their fortune-telling business. A consulter with familiar spirits. We all know what that's that, about. Right. Now, right. A wizard? That's one who has communication with the dead, the old seances, and remember the table tapping and all the rest. And some of this is real, not because the dead can come back. Hmm. Because when one dies, he either goes to be with the Lord or is eternally separated from God in a place the Bible calls hell. For the Christian to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord, 2 Corinthians 5, 8. But... For the one who's not saved, Jesus will answer it. In Luke 16, 23, the rich man died and was buried, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. So the dead cannot come back, but these spirits often imitate the dead, even their voices, and as I said, even ventriloquist demons. And so that's what it's all about. In other words, the apostles who are now with the Lord cannot be brought back. Oh, absolutely. They're not. there no forever. Can be brought back. All right. How about the necromancer? That's the last on the list. Well, that's again having to do with the dead, but this time messages from the dead to tell the future. And again, I quoted it earlier, God says, all that do these things are an abomination. Damn. All right, Jack, how in the world do people get into what they call their higher self? It's all involved 
was something that I knew nothing about until we started this study on the New Age movement. It's called the Third Eye. Let me just read something to you. And, and while I'm reading this, it would be good, I think, if you were to see something that Jack and I received in our mail. We get Time Magazine. So on the cover of a, of a special edition, they sent to us this very, very shocking collection from Mysteries of the Unknown. And you see there the third eye on top of the pyramid, and it's all connected with getting into your other self. Uh, also, here is a picture of a golden Buddha. You see the third eye just above the other two eyes, and this is what it's about. New New Age teachers call the forehead chakra the third eye or the ajna center. This energy point on the forehead is thought to be the passport to higher consciousness or godhood. Now, why are kids targeted? Remember in the beginning of the program, right up front, I, it frightened me to think that they were taking the New Age movement into the public schools? Well, the early training of kids through projects such as Spiritual Teachings for Children series has high priority in the New Age plan. It is imperative. The New Age and Hindu teachers alike believe that children be introduced to New Age concepts and religious theories at a very early age. One major region, reason is that their common belief is that in, invisible third eye centered in the forehead above the two physical eyes, this is related to the all-seeing eye of the Egyptian sun god. When this third eye is opened, Ascent New Age theorists is this, the person becomes enlightened, awake, godlike. The opening of the third eye is considered the pathway to immortality, human divinity, and self-empowerment. Oh, Jack, they're after our kids. Yeah, and it's so much malarkey, but the interesting thing is that it's a way to godhood, a way to live eternally. Well, I got news for you. There's only one way to live eternally, and that's through Jesus Christ. You want to be a god? You can be the son of God by trusting in the Son of God. You can become sons in the Son. S-O-N-S in the S-O-N, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, do you believe this Bible? Some of you claim to be Christians and you're confused, bewildered, perplexed, yeah, even bewitched because of this New Age movement. I'm going to take just one gospel, the Gospel of John. I'm going to go through chapter after chapter, giving you one verse from each. Will you watch this? As to the way of eternal life, John 1, 12, as many as received him, Jesus. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Chapter 2, verse 23, many believed in him. Chapter 3, verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned. Chapter 4, verse 13, Jesus said, quoted it earlier, whosoever drinketh of this water in the well shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up, bubbling up into everlasting life. You know why you don't have it? John 5, 40. You will not come to me that you might have life. You think he'll accept me? Chapter 6, verse 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me. I will in no wise cast out. Chapter 7, verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. You don't need Aquarius, the water bearer. <laughs> you need me. Chapter 8, verse 12. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Chapter 9, verse 38. Many worshiped. Jesus. Chapter 10, verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter and he shall be saved. Chapter 11, verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me, in me, shall never die. Wow. Chapter 12, verse 32, if I be lifted up on the cross, Calvary, I will draw all men unto me. Chapter 13, verse 20, He that receiveth me, receiveth him, the Father, that sent me. Chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
chapter 15, verse 5, I am the vine. Now that's 15 occurrences from 15 chapters in the Gospel of John. And that's why John wrote this book under the, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Listen to him in chapter 20, verse 30 and 31. Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, the Gospel of John, that you might believe, and that by believing you might have life through his name the real I am that I am. And then John also wrote three epistles in the back. And 1 John 5, 12 says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. There is sonship in the Son. You can become a son in the Son. Let me requote it. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Forget your reincarnations, your karmas to reach nirvana. Come to Jesus, the true Aquarius, <laughs> the true water bearer who will satisfy your thirst, your eternal thirst, once for all and forever. Oh, Dick, that's so wonderful. I have to say it right now. I'm so glad that I have him. Amen. I'm so glad that I'm connected with my inner guide, who is the Holy Spirit. And it sort of gets to me once in a while when I think the devil counterfeits everything. Rex, let me show something. If they can move in on a little bit on this dollar bill I have here. You were just talking about the all-seeing eye. Yes. Mm -hmm. And right here on the back of every dollar bill, you have the all-seeing eye. Take one out of your pocket right now. Look at it. You know that was put there in 1935? And the man who ran for the vice presidency of the United States of America, Henry Wallace, convinced his friend, who was then the Secretary of the Treasury, Henry Morgenthau Jr., to put that on there. The eye, which is to the god Baal, the god Jupiter, the solar eye. Mm -hmm. And you know, we think this is wonderful because above it it says that uh, we have gained his favor. But they're not talking about our God, Jehovah, not talking about our Jesus, not talking about our Holy Spirit, talking about pagan gods. All this, these years have been on it. But why? Watch this. Underneath it, it says, the New World Order. Ooh. They were planning the New Age movement. The Illuminati started this in 1776 for world domination. We're going to see all of this before we conclude this video cassette. All right, Jack, this is from the Connecting Link, the New Age magazine I mentioned right in the beginning of the program, and it says this. Some of you are familiar with the fact that America, the letters, when rearranged, spells I am race. This is the race of the I am for the earth. It is no accident that the single I is placed above the pyramid as a symbol. You just showed us that. Right, Rexel, and it all goes back to this nonsensical theory of the lost continent Atlantis. And all these spirits roamed the earth at that time. And now they tell us that America, the I am race, America rearranged in its lettering, is the Atlantis revived, we are the reincarnation, and all the spirits of that time are now here and filling our channelers. Mm. And you know, that was the theory of Adolf Hitler, the super race, the Aryan race, because he believed this, and he propagated the theory of Atlantis, and did what he did because of what he believed. And he had a spirit guide. A spirit guide. Mm -hmm. He would make a move, and it would drive his General's General, yeah. crazy because he wouldn't until he heard from his spirit guide. Mm. All right. When did the New Age uh, really begin? Well, Jack alluded to that in Genesis 3. The, the first New Age lies were not told in 1900 or 1800 or 1400. It was told right in the Garden of Eden. And we have chosen three uh, major lies that were told there to Eve at that time. The first one, Yea, hath God said actually trying to get her to doubt God's word. Yeah. That's the first slide, Jack. Right, and that's what they're doing. Uh, their keys of Enoch, the New Age Bible, has superseded the true word of God. And they're in trouble because this is the book God wrote. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Second Peter 1, verses 20 and 21. All right, then Satan said to Eve, Ye shall not surely die if you eat from the tree that's been forbidden you to eat, the fruit that's been forbidden you. You surely won't die. Reincarnation. 
Oh, that's the most blasphemous doctrine that ever came out of the pit of hell, ladies and gentlemen. And they try to use John 3, 3 to prove this theory. You must be born again. And so when one dies, he returns. Now, in the East, they call it transmigration because they're willing to accede to the fact that they can come back as an animal, so don't step on an ant because it might be your ant. But not so in America. We will not go back to being animals. We only rise higher on the scale. So we believe in reincarnation, coming back as a human being. And it's comical because they always come back as Napoleons or kings, queens, monarchs, potentates. They never come back as Skid Row derelicts. But true in reincarnationists believe that when one was wicked in his last life and he's reborn, reincarnated, he comes back in a lower form because his karma wasn't good. However, he did live a good life. He comes back in a higher form because he had good karma in the past life. And this is why they can believe anything in this movement. That's why they'll not pick up thousands who've fallen on the streets mm. in India. And they just gather them in trucks and have mass burials. Mm. But while they're lying, they're starving, crying for food. The higher-ups of the caste system who believe in reincarnation, the Hindu philosophies, look at them and say, nothing doing. You're in that condition because of your past karma, your past life. You deserve what you're getting. And so in each life, if they improve themselves, they move up the scale to another karma, and then another. And finally, they reach nirvana, and all the recycling ends, and it's over for them. But how ridiculous, because it's a system of works. And Titus 3, 5 says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy. He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. And when Jesus said, You must be born again, He could never have meant another fleshly reincarnation, because He answers in verse 6 of that third chapter by saying, That which is of the flesh is flesh. But that which is of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again of the Spirit, not the flesh, Spirit. And nothing is the Greek word from above. Mm, and Jack the third lie told to Eve by Satan. He said, if you eat of the forbidden fruit, you shall be as gods. Sounds like the New Age movement yeah, to me. We've been dealing with that. Rex, so let me just tell us about reincarnation. <laughs> this guy was married to a nagging woman, uh. and he couldn't take it. She nagged him, nagged him, and nagged him. And one day he fell on his face before God and said, Oh, take me. Take my life. I can't bear it anymore. God answered his prayer. He died. Then she died. He returned as a dog. She returned as a flea. <laughs> See why God didn't plan reincarnation? <laughs> that's right. Of course, right. that's all poppycock. We don't believe any of it. Uh, when you're born again, it's of the Spirit. It has nothing to do with the flesh. <laughs> I have here an article, Jack. That's a pretty good joke. Views of the New Age move movement coincide with Christianity. This is by Catherine Moon uh, from one of the newspapers, uh, a gazette that was sent to us from Kalamazoo. Well, is that really true? Does it really coincide with Christianity? According to Ron Zimke in Training Magazine, who is in the New Age, he says, there can be no such thing as a centered, self-hypnotizing, yoga-practicing, uh, mediator who is also Bible believing Christian. You cannot be both. You have to be one or the other. That's pretty plain, Jack. Right on. That's what I believe. They had that problem in Paul's day in Corinth where there were many of these pagan gods and familiar spirits. And he said in 1 Corinthians 10 21, You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot partake of the table of devils and the table of the Lord. Listen, first of all, the Old Testament, Psalm 1, 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Proverbs 4, 14, Enter not into the path of the wicked. Go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it. Pass away. But then over in the New Testament, Romans 16, 17, Paul says, I beseech you, I plead with you, I beg of you, 
Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you've received. And avoid them. What is that doctrine? We'll see it in a moment. 2 Corinthians 6, 14, Paul is speaking about all these pagan gods and entities and familiar spirits, as we said a moment ago, existed in the Corinthian church. And so in 2 Corinthians 6, 14, 18, he says, Be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What fellowship has righteousness, you, with unrighteousness? What communion hath light, you, with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial, the devil? What part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What agreement at the temple of God, your body, with the temple of idols, their bodies? It's impossible to commingle. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord God Almighty. Ephesians 5.11 says, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Speak out against them. From such turn away, 2 Timothy 3, 5. But from whom? What doctrine? 2 John verse 7, For many deceivers are entered in among you who confess not that Jesus Christ, God, is come in the flesh. They don't believe that what? This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Down to verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine of Christ, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. Don't say God bless you to him. For he that biddeth him Godspeed, who says God bless you, is partaker of his evil deeds. What is the doctrine of Christ? That he was God from all eternity. Romans 9, 5. Christ came, who is over all God, blessed forever. That he was born through the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary without the instrumentality of a man because it was of the Holy Spirit who implanted the seed in Mary. The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. Three, that is blood alone can save. 1 John 1, 7 says, The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth from all sin. And fourthly, that Christ died, was buried, but that he rose again bodily the third day according to the Scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 3. That's the doctrine of Christ. Deity, virgin birth, the blood atonement, and the bodily resurrection. We can disagree on other things. We cannot disagree on the doctrine of Christ. And he said, don't let anyone ever in your home if he doesn't teach those four points. Mm, that's tremendous, Jack. We need to be careful, don't we? That does away with the New Age movement. Don't tell me. I've had some of you folks write, say, I'm a Christian and I'm in it. No, you are either one or the other. You better make up your mind which. Well, Talbrook, a well-known authority on the New Age movement, says this, clearly a plan is unfolding. It is a new world order, and it is in contact with powers beyond this world. How are they doing it? Highly publicized, conscious, raising events like We Are the World, Band-Aid, Harmonic Convergence, The World Instant of Cooperation, Sun City, and Our Common Future show the degree to which our youth of the West have been influenced toward a one-world theme by their musical idols. And Randall Bear, who wrote a very, very interesting book inside the New Age Nightmare, states, in the Keys of Enoch, the New Age Bible says, we learn that the sacred science, a combination of all sciences and New Age philosophies, will create the utopian New World Order. And then, before I ask Jack another question, here is a leader in the New Age movement. I'm sure you recognize her name. Marilyn Ferguson says in her book, The Aquarian Conspiracy. The stands of free thinking within Europe are now being drawn together, and that territory is preeminently suitable for the emergence of the new political spiritual framework for the new world order. Jack, are they talking about the European economic community? Yes, Rexella, and everything we've said to this point is for this tremendous climactic moment yes. to show that this all means that Jesus Christ is coming soon. And I believe 
that the New Age movement will propel the Antichrist to power for the final world government. And let me show you why. Revelation 13, 1 says, I saw a beast rise up out of the sea of nations, having seven heads and ten horns. Keep that in your mind for a moment. Ten horns. Verse 2 tells us that he had great authority. Verse 3, all the world wondered, marveled at him. The beast. He's called a beast because of his animal-like nature. Verse 4 says, they worshipped the beast. Verse 7, power was given unto him, the beast, over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. World government. Verse 8, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life. So we see that there's going to be a world figure with world authority, but he comes out of an amalgamation of ten horns. Now, what does that mean? Now, this is where you're going to see common market. The Bible explains the Bible. In Daniel 7.24, he said, The ten horns are ten kings that shall arise. And this all started back there in 1948 when the first three nations, Belgium, Luxembourg, and Holland, got together. And by 1981, we had ten. And Christians said, this is it. No, no. Back to Daniel 7.24. He said, after there were ten, I saw another, another. And it says he was diverse from the first ten, and he subdued three. This tells us that one of the final three, for there will eventually be thirteen, will, when they come to power, cast out three of the originals. So in order to end up with ten, for we must, one has to have thirteen minus three, to have the last ten. Let's see it again. Daniel 7 verse 8. The prophet says, I considered the horns, ten of them. And there came up among the ten another little horn, number eleven, before whose face there were three, three of the first horns, originals, bucked up by the roots. You've got to have thirteen minus three to get the ten. Now when does Jesus Christ come to set up his kingdom? Oh, this is exciting. In the days of these ten, the final ten, after there were thirteen, three were booted out shall the God of heaven set up his kingdom. So, I believe what's going on now with common market is the beginning of the end. And this Antichrist will come out of this amalgamation of nations, the Western nations. And just a lot of things he's going to do, folks, but you know what? In Paul's day, there were those who told the Thessalonians that Jesus had come and they were left behind and they even used a letter forging Paul's name to frighten them. And they're concerned. So Paul hears about it and he writes again and he says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, Let no man deceive you, for that day Christ coming shall not come except there come a falling away first, apostasia, departure, defection from the faith. And then, after that happens, shall the man of sin, this beast, this world ruler, be revealed. So we've got to go home first, Christian. What is this defection? 1 Timothy 4.1, already quoted. The Holy Spirit speaks expressly, plainly, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, the Christian faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Doctrines of demons. Is it happening? Huh. Jay-Z Knight had one of the godliest fundamentalist mothers a lady could ever have. She defected. Bill Moyers, a Southern Baptist minister, is defected. He's trying to preach both Gospels. It doesn't work. The Presbyterian movement has proposed a five-year plan. They call it the New Age Plan. Seventeen nuns were just written up as having defected from the church to go to all of the things, crystals and the rest of the New Age movement. They're coming out of every denomination, including my own. I'm not picking on anyone. Why? To follow these seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. That's the last sign, folks. Because the Antichrist is going to say, all you millions claim to be, I am little gods. I am the God over the rest of you. 
He calls himself that. He magnifies himself above every god, Daniel 11, 36, and sits in the temple. 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, and this is what happens, who opposeth and exalt himself above all that is worshipped, or that is called God, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Ron Cozid, one of my crew people, said to me the other day, you know, I could never understand this, how people would really believe that a man could say, I'm God, and be accepted. Now he says, I understand it. We're accepting it. Yes. All the little gods. Shirley MacLaine, the rest, you read scores of them. Go back, look at the tape over again. I am that I am. And he'll say, but I am the God over the rest of you. It's not going to last. But this is the hour when the true God, Jesus, comes, and that's how near it all is, folks. Jack, we have to be very, very, very careful. The principal aims of the New Age movement include a new world religion, a new world Christ, who is not Jesus Christ, and a new world order. Well, we've already talked about the new world order. The University of Texas engineer claims that a world teacher is on the way back. And then we all know Benjamin Cream and that he maintains that this world teacher, whose name is Matraya, is the one expected by followers of all religions. He is at once Christ, the Messiah, the Mahdi, the Krishna, and the fifth Buddha. But religion is not his main focus. That surprises me. He comes primarily to inspire humanity to create a fair and just world. Already his energy has been the stimulus behind the freedom movements in Europe and Asia and the reconciliations that have ended numerous wars in recent months, many of which he predicted before they occurred. Is it going to be the Antichrist, Jack, this Matraya? Uh, I think he's small fry. Oh, do you? They're making a lot out of him. But who knows, you know, I don't know who he's going to be. But I know that uh, their idea behind this Matraya is that the spirit that indwelled Jesus has now returned to indwell Matraya. And again, that's blasphemy because my Jesus was God Almighty from all eternity and he'll always be God forever and forever and forever. But, Rexella, there are two personalities. I already discussed the Antichrist called the beast out of the sea in Revelation 13, 1. He's the political figure. But in the same chapter, verse 11, there is the religious figure, and he's the beast out of the earth. And so John says, I saw another beast rise up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, but he spake as a dragon. Now this proves that it's going to be some great religious personality who defects from Christendom, just like most New Agers have. Why? Because he has the two horns of a lamb. The lamb is Jesus. John the Baptist saw Jesus in John 1, 29, said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. But he spake as a dragon. And that is a picture of Satan in Revelation 20, verses 1 to 3. So the satanic spirit is behind this defecting Christian leader who leads multitudes to worship the first beast, the Antichrist, and even sets up an idol in their temple called the abomination of desolation, Matthew 24, 15, or the abomination that makes desolate because the Jews are against idolatry. It's against their commandment. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image of anything that's in heaven above, that's in the earth beneath, or that's under the earth. Exodus 20, verse 4. And so he'll set up this image and he'll even put life into the image so that this beast speaks. And we'll see more about that in a moment because what he speaks is unbelievable. All right, Jack. The universal uh, New Age movement, as they want to call it, one of their aims is to control individuals in the New World Order. The New Agers proposed to give every world resident a number and required the usage of this number in all financial transactions of any sort. That sounds like what you've been talking right, about. Right. All right. The New Age writing states, souls are Christed and given a metatronic seal so that they might be quickly purified and raised on high like the light body of Enoch. As a Christed soul, you are thus given the name of your master, the real beast, which is the final seal. And then finally, 
Alice Bailey on pages 79 and 80 of her book, The Rays and the Initiation, says that 666 is a sacred number. Jack, you have been talking about 666 for as long as I have known you. Well, that's what this beast speaks about in Revelation 13, verses 15 to 18. Many of you are familiar with this terminology, but listen again. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. He caused it all world government, all, both rich and poor, free and bond, great and small, to receive a mark in their right hand or forehead that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it's the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score and six, 600 we know, a score is 20, three score is 60 and six, or 666 in Rexella. The standardization news just released this information to 50 nations. It said when the EEC gets together in 92, There'll be mass confusion as far as weights and standards are concerned. So by the fall of 1993, and the mark's already prepared, everything coming in and out of the common market must have the EC mark. This is the beginning. Oh, folks, Jesus is coming. And as I said before, I say it again, I believe that the New Age movement will just speedily bring it to pass. Oh, Jack, because this, what you just now said, goes right into this next article, the New Agers' plan uh, to take over the world. Well, they met in Costa Rica, Central America, on June the 25th through the 30th, 1989. On that date, over 700 of the top leaders of the New Age met in conference with politicians and social planners and religious leaders to plot out an agenda for the next decade. That runs right about the year 2000. Again, from their writings, there will be a conscious reprogramming of mankind on this planet. According to the Keys of Enoch, all this will take place in stages over the next 15 years, culminating in the year 2004. That's about what you've been saying, Jack. Mm. So it will propel uh, the Antichrist into prominence. And there's so much more we could have said, but here is the vital point. During this time, and we've got documented evidence, leader after leader in the New Age movement saying that those who don't conform will have to be put to death and then be reincarnated and come back and perhaps agree with their philosophies. And that's exactly what the Bible says will happen to those who hold to the truth of God's Word. Revelation 20, verse 4, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, for the word of God, because they did not receive the mark, the mark of the beast. And they tie it all together for the year 2004, the latest. And I've read so many of their documents, and it all comes out to 2000, 2000, 2000, but the final one is 2004. We're at the end time, folks. Jesus is coming soon. There's going to be a world government, a world leader is going to claim to be God. All the little gods are saying, I am that I am now. We'll bring it to pass. In your time, in your generation, you've lived to see it. But before all that can happen, I personally believe Jesus is going to call his church away. We're going to hear the cry, Revelation 4, 1, come up hither, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we shall are alive and remain. We've lived to that hour. Shall be caught up together with them, with the dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Are you ready for that hour? Folks, it's here. The coming of the Lord is right at the door. I can almost hear the knock. Are you ready? If they're right, with their dates, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2004 at the latest. Will you be ready when Jesus comes? He's got to come first. You can only be ready through him. I've quoted all the verses. I don't have to quote anymore. There's life in the Son. He that the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. He shed his blood for you. Under Christ, oh, who loved us and washed us from our sins, 
in his own blood. Thank you for writing that, John, for inspiring John, Holy Spirit of God, in Revelation 1 5. It's through his blood. You know, I'd like for you to look at me right now and pray this from your heart to get ready for the coming of Christ. Lord Jesus, say it after me. I'm a sinner. You died for me. Shedding your blood for the remission of my sin. Wash me. Cleanse me. Change me. I repent of my past. I want to be set free from this New Age movement. I want to be set free from another cult. You know which one it is that has you. I want you, Jesus. Come into my heart. Save me now. In your name. I pray this. Amen. Amen. Jack, thank you so much for giving us the truth on this wonderful tape. And if you just opened your heart to the Son of God when Jack prayed with you, You've just become a member of God's family, and I would like to say welcome to the family of God. Please write to us if you have finished watching this video and made that decision. We would love to send to you absolutely free, with no obligation, a beautiful little booklet entitled, First Steps in a New Direction. It will help you in your newfound faith in Jesus Christ. May God bless you and help you as you grow in Him.